There is a moment in all of our lives that if we cross certain lines when it comes to the protocols and the counsels of God, there is no amount of prayer that can touch that. You have to take your hands off. And I believe that one of the most dangerous things in the church in our time and age is familiarity with God and daring and testing the grace of God. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And that is to everybody including myself. None of us are above scripture. None of us are above scripture. And as I preach to you, I'm preaching to myself that all of us must take heed to the word of God and to our salvation and realize that you can be a believer and lose your salvation and go to hell. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you so that my hands will be free and innocent of your blood. Because I'm working on my own salvation. I can't work on yours for you. And you will see as we go on that the husband and the wife will be working and the husband will go and the wife will remain. A, a father will go and a son and a daughter of a father will not go. A mother will be taken, a wife will be taken, and the husband will not go. And the only way that wife or husband will make it is to be beheaded and become a martyr for Jesus. There are difficult times ahead, and my assignment is to enlighten you. What you do with the enlightenment is your problem. It's not mine. It's only my problem if I don't declare the whole counsel of God. But as soon as you hear it, you are responsible. Even people not coming to church. Not coming to church. Not coming to weekday services. All of that are signs of the end times. Lukewarmness. They are all signs of the end times. People holding back what is due to the house of God. Having an attitude of ingratitude. Are signs of the end time, an attitude of rebellion, stubbornness, and literally daring God and challenging the word of God and doing their own thing and serving God their way and not on God's terms. They are all signs of the end time. Disobedience to parents are signs of the end time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the end times. And one of the greatest truths of the signs of the end time is that it will become very difficult for people to believe that they are in the end time. And that is one of the signs. I was talking to a believer yesterday and said, Papa, this scripture is too scary. And I said, and he said, I'm scared. And I said, me too, I'm scared. But I have to preach it. I was talking about the seven plagues after the rapture and the two witnesses and the three angels. We'll go through on Wednesday, you see. And for whatever reason, the Spirit of God is not going to strive with us forever. There is a point where God and His Spirit will leave us alone. And I'll show you as we go along that a time is coming when the gospel will not be preached anymore. And when the door of salvation will be shut and nobody will hear the gospel, that will be the end. The door will be shut. You won't have opportunity to repent anymore. And there will be no opportunity to hear the gospel. It will be over. And that is when the Bible will say, He that is righteous, remain righteous. And he that is filthy, remain filthy. He that is unrighteous, remain unrighteous. Please turn your Bibles with me. To 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. I show you that which is hidden. That which men and women in the flesh and who are carnal, depending on just intelligence, physical intelligence and knowledge acquired from education, cannot comprehend. A mystery. It's hidden. It's truth. But it's kept from us. And Paul said, let me show you or reveal or make known unto you. Mystery. Truth, hidden and kept from us. Ladies and gentlemen, hear the word of God. We shall not all sleep. We shall all, we shall all not, not sleep. sleep. It means not all of us will die. Some will go ahead, but some will leave. Look at what happens. 
But we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed when mortals are put on immortality. We shall all be changed, dead or alive. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, mm -hmm. at the last trump, mm -hmm. for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved Therefore, brethren. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Because of everything you have heard from verse 51 to verse 57. Therefore, my beloved brethren, this is what you must do. Be ye steadfast. Be ye steadfast. I'm telling you. Because you can be deceived. You can be carried out of the faith. You can miss church little by little. There are people, they start sitting at the front seat. Then they are on fire for God. When it's praise and worship, they're on fire. You see them singing, dancing, excited. Then suddenly they move to the next seat. Gradually they keep moving. They keep moving. Before you find out they are at the back seat. Hey, I didn't see in church. I'm there. Where were you sitting? Oh, I'm hiding. Next thing, no more. You don't see them. It's once a week. Then once a month, then once every now and then, when you have visiting speakers or prophets, then they show up. Convention, they show up. Wednesday service, they don't come. No prayer meeting. Little by little, they are losing it and they don't even know it. The Bible said, and Solomon's heart began to depart from the Lord. That was the first time. Then the second time, and, he said, and the heart of Solomon began to depart from the Lord. Then the third time, and he said, and the heart of Solomon began to depart from the Lord. And the fourth time, the Bible said, and the heart of Solomon departed from the Lord. Be steadfast. Be, be ye steadfast. Be ye steadfast. Unmovable. Unmovable because things can move you in the church. Don't be fooled. Some people say, why is it that Christians are like that? What do you want Christians to be like? Think Christians are angels. We are not angels. We are human beings. We have issues. We are all sick. And we've all come to church. We are, this is a hospital. We have all come with different kinds of diseases. And we are all here to see Dr. Jesus. So stop judging me and stop judging others. Because you are also sick. We are all sick. We've all come to be healed. So stop expecting angels. There are no angels in the church. The church is full of sinners like you and me. So all these expectations, hey, why a Christian like that, a Christian brother, a Christian sister, you are a baby. You are a baby. You don't know what I'm talking about. You are a novice. There are problems in the church. Because you see, the devil also comes to church. When the sons of God gathered, Satan showed up. And God said, Satan, what are you doing here? He said, but this is the best place to attend. This is the best place to come. Because if I can get people to leave the house of God, I will get them out there easily. So he comes into the church and will attack you in the church through a Christian brother and sister. And if you are not mature and you get offended, you have been trapped. So the best place he attacks us is in the church, not in the world. If he attacked me among my unbelievers, brothers and sisters, I will easily know how to deal with it. But when he attacks you through betrayal in the church and get you out of the church, you are finished. That's what the Bible says. Be unmovable. Always. Go ahead. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Every now and then abounding. No, sir. When you feel like. When it looks right. No. By what? Always. Always. 
Always mean in season and out of season. Always mean good times and bad times. Always mean when you are misrepresented, when you have been betrayed, when you are offended, when your integrity is attacked, when a brother and a sister disappoint you, when the archbishop offends and hurts you. Because archbishop is a human being and he's not an angel and makes mistakes. I'm great, but with my greatness also goes with vulnerability. That is the mistake people think, do. They think that when you are great, everything is correct. No, every greatness has vulnerability. That's true. And that's why Noah can be great as he was and still drink and be naked in his own tent. That's why David can be a man after God's own heart and commit adultery and kill Uriah. And yet he was a man after God's heart. I'm not giving you permission to go sin and fool around. I'm just telling you that with greatness also is vulnerability. Jesus was the son of God, divinity. He was also the son of man, vulnerability. Why am I telling you this? Don't let your greatness enter your head. Eh? Don't let your greatness enter your head. Don't, don't let the greatness and the relevance and the accolades of life and the success of life and the material possessions of life, don't let it enter your head and think you are Ajimai and King Kong and you have arrived. Nobody is King Kong. As long as you are in this flesh, you are vulnerable. Tell somebody, take it easy, take it easy. Tell somebody, I know you are very principled, but take it easy.